Hello guys, David Bose here. Well, um, yeah, what another beautiful day we are experiencing here. It is a beautiful weather. And just, you know, I haven't gotten out and taken a walk in the last few days. I've been just sitting here doing these videos. Um, I guess I've got some very interesting things going on right now I, i'm meditating a lot i'm just thinking about caesar because i've been doing a few videos about that and cleopatra and you know yesterday when i made that video about caesar i was pretty pleased with the way it turned out it ended up going a little over an hour and stuff and i i was surprised by that because i wanted to kind of keep it below an hour but there's just so much information and but you know once I had finished it and I put it out and then I went back and watched it just to see how it looked on the main screen you know I usually do that I in after I I spent you know two or three hours doing these videos and you have to sit and load them and all this stuff so then I end up uh having a little dinner and I'll I'll watch the video and I watched it and I thought well man that's a lot of information and I thought, man, I, I don't know how well that's going to go over. And then I usually look in the comments to see how people are, how, you know, are reacting to it. And most of my videos, I think I get pretty good reactions. And, and, and I know when, when the video is real uh, helpful to people because they will thank me and say, good video, Dave. Thank you so much. And, 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 you know, I appreciate that because it helped me to know that, you know, I'm doing something, that there's a point to what I'm doing here. Of course, now we're all mixed up with this whole debate with, you know, and I ended up having to just block him today. I, he just, I don't know, like the little Energizer bunny, only he's full of like some kind of other energy. But, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with that. And, and, and I, I will, I will hope and pray to the Lord that, his eyes are opened to the truth. Otherwise, as I said, he's just going to go blind. And um, that's sad to think, but it's even sadder to think about all the people that are just little children and don't really know what they're doing. They're being influenced by the television and and all of the things in society. And, and then we got people like him that I really believe. Now, I don't know this and I, I don't want to um, say this is a fact, you know, necessarily. I mean, I don't have, you know, uh, a piece of paper in front of me, a document signed by the president. It says, we have now investigated Daughtry and determined that, you know, this and that. But I feel that he's not just a truther and got off the rails. I really think that he has decided, for whatever reason... I, I, and I know a lot of you think, well, you know, it's just his opinion. It's, you know, he, everybody is entitled to their opinion. Well, technically, you know, it might be his opinion, but it really is the Antichrist teachings that Bible tells us will come in the latter days. They will be teaching the doctrines of devils. How did they get these doctrines? I don't think it's natural to come to these conclusions. It's kind of like this old story where people say, oh, well, you know, I'm just a transgender. That's who I am, you know. <laughs> And, you know, you, you can do what you want in your bedroom. And, and if I want to whack off my, you know, that's, that's my um, right. And you should just leave me alone. Well, that would be one thing. We just left them alone. They'd leave us alone. But that's not what they're doing. They, they're, 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 uh, they're, they're warriors <laughs> for their cause. And they're, they're trying to literally demand that we take down all of this uh, uh, love of Jesus we don't want to, they're not, we're not allowed to even speak about Jesus or, 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 or say Christmas or anything, you know, it, it's this thing where there's a hatred of the Christian church, but it's been twisted because there's no Christian church in the world. All of this Christendom was taken over by Satanism a long time ago, but it goes in stages. Of course, Satan can't just take over the church and just say, okay, now we're going to worship the devil. He's going to have to say, you know, no, you, you, Jesus wasn't really the Lord. Then you move on to another more, you know, diabolical 
belief of, well, any deity will do, but just don't believe in Jesus. You can believe in any other ones you want. And now it's come down to where people are joining the Wiccan and they're joining, which again, the word Wicca doesn't mean anything good or bad, which it's just that, that, that they believe it's bad. They think they're dark and they're putting spells on people and and they have this belief that there really isn't any, you know, superiority of love over hate or or it's all good, brother. Just do whatever you want, you know. And like Santos Bonacci was saying the other day, you know, Jesus is Satan and Satan is Jesus. It doesn't matter, you know. And, and this is sort of the, the theme that's going on with these guys. Now, how do they get to this point where they think that, well, I have a right to kill my own child? up to the point, even after it comes out of the womb, we're not going to, some of these doctors won't even, because they were going to try and perform an abortion or something, and the baby survived, and they're like, they won't let the, treat the baby. Why? Well, you see, because the, the lady was raped. And so, it's her, you know, right as a human being to not, ha not have to take care of this child. Well, I'm sorry that, you know, the child, and you're, what happened to you, and uh, certainly that's not good. But the thing of it is, once that child is born, I mean, let's just forget about it. this other, you know, procedure, medical procedure, if, if we could put it that way, so I don't have to say the word. These Some of these babies survive and they don't give it medical attention. I heard somebody say the other day that, you know, one reason we know that it's a person, you know, even when it's just growing a few weeks in the womb, is because it has DNA. What is a DNA? It's a pattern an entity it's your it's you see you can't have a physical pattern without a being right thoughts make the world and they begin to form their own identity because they have a a little dna that tells them who they're going to be and so you say well they haven't been yet right they're just a, a little seed well the seed is everything that the, the plant will eventually become Yes, it hasn't learned everything yet. It hadn't learned to walk yet. You know, you, it, but it's, it's, it's still the same thing. It's the in, entire person that hasn't yet done anything yet. Hasn't got out and learned to walk or talk or, or, or see any beautiful things. Although, if you believe in reincarnation, that person is an entity that has existed before. And that's their pattern growing in the womb. But, you know, the point is, is that we have laws against murdering people. You don't say, well, we can murder that person because it's a, he's a bastard. He didn't have a mother, right? Or, or he was, a, he was, um, that person can, you know, somebody, let's say somebody took a baby and dropped it off at your front door. All right. We say, well, that's not my child. I have, I have rights too. I don't want to take care of this baby. And so you go and, <clears throat> well, I won't say. You know, you, you have the right to just get dispense of it because, after all, it's not fair that you should have to take care of this child. I mean, friends, when we get to a point where the world cannot see the difference between good and evil, when we can't understand that even though life presents us with burdens, we still don't have the right. You know, it's my right to be happy and you're... you're invading my happiness so I can just kill you, right? I mean, as human beings, we're going to have, you know, trials and tribulations. There are going to be people, by that logic, we might come to the place where we get to the point where if somebody just annoys you, you could just, you know, get rid of them because they're not, you, you have the right to not be annoyed, right? But you see, it's so convoluted because if in, in reality, your child the way it was born was perfect, was was natural and beautiful. If you believe in beauty, if you believe the Lord is is good and his creation is good, if we don't abuse it, right? If you believe that the natural order of things would give us happiness, which is what I believe is my central theme of belief, and you believe that, then the reason there is pain and suffering is because of this unnatural sort of plan that some people have to sort of change nature and make it better. Well, see, I, I'm going to change my life and make it better. I don't really want to be a boy. I want to be a girl. I'm going to make myself better. So I'll just do a procedure. I'm better. Like, this is why we got scientists running around thinking that they can, uh, 
you know, eradicate disease by taking little mosquitoes and breeding them with other diseases. And then because they're so ignorant, they end up spreading disease. Well, you say, yeah, but Dave, you got to do something. We've got disease. We've got to get rid of it. Well, but the ignorance is, is that disease is not natural when you live naturally, right? Why, why do we have bugs and maggots and, and, and bacteria that causes cancer or death or eats your body away? Well, it comes, I, I, you know, it comes from dead carcasses, which is death. So if human beings had never killed one another, I mean, you look at the Bible in Genesis. It talks about how mankind was made to live and we eat fruit and we were going to live forever and we were happy. But then somebody introduced the idea of, well, well, it was actually Yahweh. He's like, oh, you're a sinner. I hate you. Uh, now there's guilt. He's deceived Adam and Eve into thinking that, oh, well, they're guilty and they're immortal. He's going to kill them and run them out of the garden. It put shame upon them. Oh, you must be ashamed of your natural body. So they had to hide and cover themselves. Well, how do you cover the, the only way you can cover yourself? You know, if you're really ashamed and you feel like you're dying is then you start believing in dying and guilt and you, and you reciprocate that hate. And so Yahweh says, here's how I'm going to fix it. You go and kill an animal and then you can clothe your naked shamefulness. But in order to, cover this shamefulness, you're going to be required to kill another sentient being and pour out his blood upon the ground. And the, and the true heavenly father says his blood cries out unto him. How long, O oh Lord, will you allow this evil? And the Lord says, well, I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm trying to give them a time to repent. And, and, and the righteous, you've got to learn to, to not be deceived by your brother when he comes and lies to you. So that People with these twisted demonic teachings can't come into our, here we are living properly and naturally and we don't kill each other. But, but, but somebody says, well now I have the right to, to make a school of propaganda in your family's clan. And I'm gonna demand that your children go to our school and we're gonna teach them about our views. Well, you know, it's only fair, right? Well, what are your views? Well, we view, we, we believe that, um, we should kill one another. Oh my goodness, now look at after we've started killing one another, we've got a problem. Now we need government. We need police to protect you from our killing you. So now we need police because you've decided to do it your way instead of the way of love. And say, oh, we don't want to follow some guy named Jesus. How, how come we have to follow Jesus? Why do we have to follow your deity? It's not my deity. It's the creator who, who created us because he loves us. And his ways are higher than our ways because... He is the infinite, eternal, pure, and true mind that is naturally in the universe that had no creation. No one created him. No one created our divine mother. These are the reality. And the only reality that can be is this living. And living is loving. And living is happiness. This other thing is a cancer. It starts from this ignorance when you start killing one another. But... You see, we've spent 100 years now teaching and educating our children, demanding that they be fair. And let's, let's listen to, to some atheist called Darwin teach us rather than the Lord Jesus. We, we have to have fair time. Satan gets fair, you know, equal time now. And, and by the way, since all you people are all believers in the Lord and his love and stuff and charity and goodness and kindness and grace and all of that, well, we'll have to uh, put a television program on that teaches you to go out and kill one another and have war and and hate one another and be racist and and cop shows and and surgical shows that dissect the human bodies and put pharma drugs into people and stuff. But you see, most of us to start with back in the day, we would have known, oh, we don't want that on our television. What they had to do is start putting, uh, luring people to watch it. Like it, it wasn't about the propaganda at first. It was just nudity or some sort of adventure or maybe they were offering you some job with you could get a lot of money and come work for us. But in order to do that, of course, you've got to hurt somebody, right? Well, you, we'll get, we'll pay you really well, right? Um, join the military and, and murder your brothers and sisters, but we'll pay you very well. Well, 
How do you get anybody to join the military, no matter how much you pay them to kill their brothers? Well, probably not very many. This is why you've got to go in and cause famine first. So people are starving and they're like, well, I got to feed my family and there's no food. And the only way I'm going to feed my family is this, oh, here comes this nice man over here saying that if I'll join the army, I can join his army and they'll feed me and my family, see? And, and, and they told us that, well, yeah, this terrible situation of famine, why, you know, we've got to combat that and we're, we've got scientists working on it. And so we're the good people. We'll fix it for you. But they don't ever tell you they were the ones that started the famine. They were the ones that broke up your families. They were the ones that, 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 you know, are your enemy. And then they come in through the back door and say, oh, you want to get rid of your enemy? And you don't know it's the same person. Because, you know, if they just murdered us, we would hate them and we would avoid them. So they have to murder us, but then come in the, around the back door and say, oh, yeah, we're not the murderers. We're not those ones that murdered you. We're the ones that's going to protect you. So join our army and we'll go kill them. Well, them means all these poor little people that are in this country ruled over by the enemy. So we'll just kill all the people in the, in the country, not the enemy. Because the enemy's left. And now they're coming around the back door to tell you that you got to join an army to kill the enemy. But the enemy's gone. They're the enemy. So, this is the kind of circular argument the devil has been doing for thousands of years. And now he's got, you know, he's got into our constitution and he's like ruined it so that, you know, we have these freedoms to bear arms and to speak freely and stuff. But now we have these loopholes. You know, yes, we have a constitution, we're free, we have our rights. But, you see, you don't have rights when it's between the hours of 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock. You know, why? Well, that's when um, these other people who have rights, right, want you to not have rights. So, you see, we've got to balance this. You have a constitutional right to bear arms. But, if we can come up with another whole system that is a bunch of crazy laws that we just made up that aren't moral or, you know, which it, that in itself is against the Constitution, which says you shall make no law to infringe upon my freedom. But now they've made these laws. And we're not concentrating on the fact that they've made these false laws because somehow or another we agreed to those false laws because, like I said, we got burglars and thieves come into our house. So now we've got to have a police state, right? Because Which is taking away our freedom. But we've agreed to having a police state because they're coming in and burglarizing our homes. And we think, well, we've got to get rid of these burglars, so we'll hire some more burglars to come out and stand in the street and, and protect us, right, from the burglars. You know, it's kind of like the mafia that says, hey, you want insurance? And they say, I don't need insurance. From what? You know, when do you pay me 10 bucks a month and you won't have anybody damaging your things? Uh, I don't have anybody damaging my things. I don't need insurance. And they take a baseball bat and smash the window out in your car and say, now see, you pay me and I won't do that. That's kind of what it is. So we have rights that say you can have and bear arms and they can't get around that. But what they do is they say, well, some people are crazy. See, we made a law that says if you're crazy, you know, and, and, and then, then you, you, you know, like you have to have a certain age where you can own a weapon. You can't, certainly, we, we get everybody convinced because we have these, like, television commercials and ads going around saying, listen, obviously we wouldn't give a gun to a baby. Even though every citizen has the right to bear arms, we well, wouldn't give a gun to a three-year-old, would you? Uh, no. Okay, then we'll make a law that says you have to have all your guns locked up in the closet because, after all, if you're going to have children around, right, then you have to have them all locked up. Okay, I guess that makes sense. All right, all right, all right. Now, next step is, well, you certainly wouldn't want us to give the weapons to the people who are convicted of terrible crimes, murdering and killing you, right? If they're murderers, they shouldn't have weapons. Uh, I think that's reasonable. Okay, so we're going to just make a law that everybody's in prison, they're felons, because, well, why? Well, they, they partook of a... a an herb that we didn't agree with, or they, you know, jaywalked, or, or they spoke out against the government, you know, on January 6th, right? Uh, or some crazy thing that made you now a criminal, right? Maybe you and your wife got into an argument, and so now, you you know, they call that assault or something, right? I don't know, maybe it was, but do you now no longer have the rights to own a weapon? 
or to be a human being and to have the right to, to go out hunting and and, and 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 you know and 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 bring food into your family oh well we don't have to do that anymore we've got grocery markets dave so anyway it's just this it's just a scheme to deceive every living soul on the earth and here's the deal that was just in the past that we've lived through for a hundred years I mean, it started for thousands of years, slowly, slowly, and now this last hundred years, and then the last 20 years, but now we're getting to the point where they're literally going in and recruiting. There are satanic covens. They invented a law, said that we could take your children away if, if you're, if you're neglecting them. Well, they can't even take it to court. Like, if you'd done some terrible thing, you could go to court and you have a jury trial. And then if you lost by a jury trial of your peers, then they could take your kids away. No, that would be the logical thing, right? But no, this is just a system, like a, like a, uh, you know, some, uh, like NASA that was just established or the, or the CIA. What do we need that for? We've got to spy against the, the Russians. Why? Because they've got nuclear weapons. They could kill us at any moment. So we've got to spy on them. So we've got to have a, a clandestine organization that nobody knows what they're doing. And oh, now they're spying on us. Right? Oh, wow. Crazy. Well, see, these, the enemy, they're Russians, right? They're, they're communists. And why, of course, we're, we're capitalists and we're good people and they're bad people and they've got nuclear. So we've got to fight them. We've got to defend ourselves. So we've got to have nuclear. Oh, the little rocket man with his flag is red, white, and blue. Hmm. This little guy that somehow is just standing over there lobbing up little missiles in the air, you know? And we can't do anything about it. While we're just frightened, we, we scare the people every election. Give us more money so we can have a bigger, bigger military. We've got to fight the communists. Well, they don't tell you that there's this clandestine organization that runs the Russians and the Americans. They're behind the Democrats and the Republicans, the capitalists and the communists. And the communists are scared of us and we're scared of them. And both sides got to build up arms to kill each other. So basically... The people that we need to fight are the people that's running us, enslaving us here. Same people that are enslaving them over there. And we're sitting around watching our television while they tell us that it's, no, it's them. And, and they're saying, no, it's these. So we're killing each other while they're up there having a martini on Epstein Island. And taking all of our money while they're at it in, in taxes. I mean, trillions of dollars. And meanwhile, laughing, oh, we've got to have education, which is propaganda to get us into doing this thing in the first place. Right? So, but now they've gotten, they've sponsored religions. That, remember what they, they used to say is that, well, we're, we're a constitution, uh, you can have any religion you want, it's freedom. Okay, well, they've turned that into, oh, a religion is good. Send your child to a church of your choice. Of course, we run all the churches, and what we'll teach your child when you go to this church is propaganda. Obey the government. Oh, you know, the police are good. They're harassing you, but oh, just, just bow down. That's what your church is telling you. Never lie. Put your money in the pot and give it to the, the Red Cross or the poor or these charities that are just like the, like the Bill Clinton uh, philanthropy, right? They, they take all your money, and what do they do with it? Oh, we gave a bunch of people to Haiti. We gave we gave fifty thousand dollars to Haiti. Of course, huh, they themselves. There's proof that they went down there and took all these little starving Haitian babies and in a pedophile ring. And there, you you gave them say fifty million dollars for the for the poor children in Haiti, and they took everything but that little fifty thousand dollar. Well, they gave all this money to hate to the Haitian government, which was ruled over by some person they put in power. And the person that they put in power is only there in power so long as they take 1% and give the Clintons their other 99%. So all this money we're giving to charities going right into the hands, just like these toll roads. Where do you think they're going to get? Think about this. $5 every few hundred feet? You got to pay another $5 to go down the, down the road? Even though we pay our taxes to make roads and, and schools and stuff. So the schools are giving us propaganda. The roads, we don't know what they're doing with the money. They gotta ask for money for toll roads now. And, and, and this is like billions of dollars. Where's it going? Well, same thing with the casinos. They make deals with the Native Americans so they can make, take all your money. 
I mean, it's like, oh, we got to have a tax on top of the gas, right? So that we can put poisons in the gas so that it can kill you. Yeah, we want 30 cents a gallon so that we can go out and use that 30 cents a gallon to put poisons in your gas to kill you. Oh, we've got to have a, a water department, right? So why? Well, because if we control all the water, we'll put some poison in it called fluoride and it will kill everybody. But now you pay us a hundred bucks a month for us to do this. So you see, every one of these things that they do with our taxes is really just sort of like a, a scam to keep us in control and we're doing it. But what I'm saying is it's gotten worse now. Because that's all the stuff that we are kind of waking up to. But what I don't think we're really waking up to is the, is the real problem here. I was just, you know, I, I told you guys before, I don't think I've watched a movie, a Hollywood movie for years. I think about three years ago, I went to a movie theater with my daughter because she wanted to go. And I don't even remember what we were seeing. But I mean, I really don't watch movies and I haven't listened to the radio. The only, like I say, if I do go anywhere and I get really bored, I'll turn on talk radio or something. And I'm getting to the point where I can't even watch that either. I realize it's all a bunch of alien inductions on George Norrie and, you know, and, and, uh, or Lush Rush Limbaugh politics or crap that I don't believe or agree or I can't stand to listen to. So I don't listen to the radio. But on my YouTube, from time to time, I end up seeing some advertisement. And there was this girl that kept popping up. And I'd never heard of her before. So I clicked on it. And I'm like, oh, what's this? Her name's, it's, I guess it's the new thing. The new gag gag, right? That's about the last one I heard of, this gag gag, right? Well, now we, it, now we, see, they're trying to influence our babies, our children. So this is why I think, like, uh, what is it? Katy Perry was a Christian girl. You know, and, and, and she's kind of this, uh, upstanding looking girl, you know, tattoos or whatever. Maybe, maybe they, maybe she can persuade the children, right? The Christian children to do crazy things. So she starts off this little Christian girl and then she's riding a beast, straddling a beast at half time on, at the, at the Super Bowl, right? Now she's got her hair shaved off like a butch. I guess they pay him to do that. You know, like they paid the Jehovah's Witness Michael Jackson to wear a pink shirt and go, ooh, ooh, and touch his crotch just because, you know, hey, I'm sure Michael was a good person. I didn't, I don't believe he was as bad as they say. The only reason they started hating on him is because he got to a point where he had millions and millions and millions of dollars and they wanted to keep all of his money. And he was like, wait a minute, this isn't right. And then there's the prince with the pink shirt and, the, you know, a baby, the purple rain, you know, and all this. And he kind of looks infeminate. Well, they, you know, the Rod Stewart, I find out now, years later, he wasn't gay. They just told him to act like he was. So it, it's just a bunch of satanic organizations start to propagandize your kid. And they want you to believe that all of these people are just these talented young men that just made the fame. They're just so clever and they're so cool. But in reality, they're the billionaire's children like Paris Hilton that just gets to be the front, you know, on Vogue magazine because she's a, a rich lady. See, these billionaires, they they make their kids uh, heads of FB, Facebook. Uh, they make their children, you know, they put them over the Goggle Brothers or they'll uh, put them in movies and make them stars and we'll get down and grovel and cry. Oh! <laughs> I love you. I worship you. Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, I got to look just like you. Oh, so now these idols, they got their tattoos or or, or or they're talking their liberal, you know, insanity. I want to kill my baby and you should too. So we start believing them and our children are like looking up to these people. So, I mean, last I heard was the God guy and all of this, right? Well, now they get this new one and I haven't paid attention until now and I looked at her and I'm like, wow, they're going to really suck a lot of our kids in with this one. Because just like Katy Perry starts off, you know, looking, you know, like some little kind of a Christian girl and she turns into some butch and doing some explicitly sexual thing in the, in her videos or whatever, music videos. And, and, and we see uh, this Keisha doing some animal sacrifice in one of her videos, right? And, and Madonna straddling the beast and Katy Perry straddling the beast and, and, and Gaga who's talking about, uh, her lovers and, and all of this weird, I don't know, I, I, she's so sick, I don't even know what she's talking about, really. But this new one's called Dua Lipa. And she's very attractive, and she looks like she's 
being promoted to 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 lure in Christian young people is what it looks like to me, kind of like a Katy Perry. But they gave her music that is so hypnotic, and she's doing this dance. It's so hypnotic with her dress right up to her. You know, you could just about see her little panties, and 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 she just got this hypnotizing way. And I guarantee, give her another few more months, and she'll be straddling that beast up on the halftime at the at you know. So this is what they're doing. They know how to suck you in and get you to. They're all flashing the the upside down pyramids and the wearing the upside down crosses and getting your like Madonna said. Oh, I'm into the Kabbalah now. I'm studying Kabbalah. So all the young people are like, "What's Kabbalah? Oh, let's go join the Kabbalah now." Nobody has a clue what they're doing. So they start this. They have to get it passed through Congress. This thing called social services, where without taking you to trial, right, you don't even have a jury trial. They can come in and just take your kid. Okay, where do they take your kid? I was just watching a movie or a, uh, something on YouTube where these guy's interviewing people that are homeless. And, and he's interviewing these homeless people and they're all on drugs and they're, they look like they're dying, right? And good people. I love these poor children, right? That have just been, they have no clue. They have no education about Christ or truth or love. Or any way to reason their way out of this hell they're in. And they're on drugs. And they and then then given this fentanyl that's been coming over the borders and killing our babies. But if you notice they've all got tattoos from head to toe, it rings in every part of their body. Some of them, if they're not flipping all over the ground from some other weird drug, they're 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 just kind of uh by getting their way through life by selling their body. Maybe they're prostitutes. And, and they'll interview them and they'll say, yeah, I'm on the street because I'm transgender or I'm gay and nobody likes me. Uh, I hate myself, right? I'm on drugs. I don't care. I hate this world. I hate God, right? No, I'm not a Christian. I hate Jesus because all you Christians have condemned me. Well, who... Got your mind to the state of being where you hate Jesus who came and died for your sins? Who got you so that you're in pain, wreathing on the ground, homeless, putting, you know, swastikas on your forehead? Who is it that got you down to this place where you were in prison and you end up getting out and you join a gang? And now your brother's murdered and you're selling drugs to the poor children in the neighborhoods. And then you hate yourself and therefore you have no love for anyone else. Who did this? It was not your, your parents. They, they were taken. Your parents didn't know how to save you because they were, they were overcome by some satanic trance 20, 30 years before that. But it wasn't quite the one you're in. They weren't, they weren't, you know, that was like, 20, 30 years ago, so they couldn't just come right out and tell your, your mom and dad to be Satanists. At that point, they were just telling them to stop believing in, in the Lord and don't read the Bible and don't pray and, and everything is uh, open, for de- open for debate, right? Just have free sex and when your kid comes, you just do it. So that's what your parents were. They, they didn't know how to love because they were never told how to love. Huh. Some parents before that were the best parents you've ever, I mean, they were wonderful people. But they were never taught how to love. They were taught that you had to work, 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 be a slave, slave, slave. And they didn't know how to even take a minute out of their little busy schedule of being a slave to just put their arms around you. I mean, it's just gotten worse each generation. But now our children are on the street and, and somehow now this is Jesus' fault. When Jesus predicted all of this and told us why we would get to this point, because we rejected him. Because we rejected his grace. But they've gone further now. Because like I said, they had to bank up their plan with this entrance into the parliament in England and the entrance into Congress and buying and selling the senators. And they can pass these laws where they can just take your kids. And then I heard that a lot of these kids were taken from their parents because they're one of the parents went to jail for a month or two. And when he got out, 
uh, the kid was already in social service, they couldn't get him back, or or one of the parents was being beaten by another parent, or, you know, so maybe the kid didn't, um, was left alone in the house for a day or two or something at, at the age of eight, okay? Not a good thing. That I would say that might be neglect. But here's the thing. That parent loved their kid. Maybe they were high on drugs for two days and didn't know where they were. So instead of saying, oh my goodness, you poor family, let's stop these drugs coming over the border. Let's help these families. Let's, let's you know. No, what they do is they take you into counseling, say you can't have your kid back unless you get on drugs because you're depressed, of course. And if you don't, you know, become controlled by our pharma and put your kids on drugs too because that'll take them into a place of some satanic depression. And slowly, little by little, over the weeks and months, they take your kid completely away from you because you get to a place where they're demanding that you go into counseling and admit that the kid has as much rights as you do. While you're going to have to come to a compromise, let your kid stay out past midnight. Huh? Yeah, you got to like work it out with the child. And if the kid decides that he doesn't like your rules, then they'll just take them and take them to a foster care where they'll let them do anything they want. And they got a satanic coven where they're letting them have sex. Where they're teaching them that, oh, this freedom of having sex and having drugs. Do you know that these satanic covens, I'm not kidding you, are running the social services right now? It was their plan all along. And why I'm bringing this up is because there's all kinds of places where the satanists are taking over. There are so many of these satanic churches and so many of you out there just, you know, like, oh, this is wonderful. It's freedom. I'm joining a satanic church where I can be a, a whore and be, you know, thrown into a circle and five guys will have me in the same night. Well, why would you do that to yourself? Well, because I've come to a place where I don't believe in anything. I hate myself and all I've got is pleasure and they give me drugs, right? And, um, Somehow or another, your mind comes so far down to this depression that you actually think that att attention of any kind is better than being alone and hated. You want these guys to, 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 to abuse you. Because it's like, it's like, I know a lot of you are going to say, Oh, David, how dare you say that my abuse was my own fault? I'm not saying that. You were a child. It wasn't your fault. But what I'm trying to do is show you that they have, they have, made the problem and then the solution. They make you so depressed that you want to die. All right? And they've taught you to to blow your own being. You were born a girl, now you got to be a boy. They've taught you that you're not going to be loved by the rest of all the other little boys are gay. Why you know, if you're going to have friends, you've got to join the cult. Go to the coven. And they all like have a big orgy. Right? This is like fun. And once, once the orgy's over and the drugs, you go back to your actual state of consciousness that is, you know, normal walking life and you can't stand it because these demons are now inside of you, hating you. You hate yourself. Depression, anxiousness, anger, fear, worries. You can't handle the pain anymore. And, and you don't know who to blame. You blame your parents. You blame Jesus. You blame God. It is the Satanists. And this is what Satanism is. And this is what Wicca is. Nothing wrong with the word, the word witch, guys. Nothing wrong with the ancient mysteries. But that religion is not the ancient mysteries. Neither is Jehovah's Witness of Christianity, nor is the Catholic Church Christianity. None of these are, are really what they what you're being told. Satan took over all of the organizations of the world. He's got all authority now on this earth, but not in heaven. Jesus has the authority in the real earth. The heaven and the real earth. This earth is just hell now. And you're living in it. And you're and 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 yeah, you were lured into this. Well, it's not fair. Well, no, this is, this is what you've never been told. This is why I'm here. This is why I'm going to tell you the gospel right now. So if you're in that situation, I want you to listen. Yes, the Lord allowed you because you made your choices. You were deceived. But he loves you. And this is why he's sending forth his prophets. This is why there's a Bible. And this is why I'm telling you the gospel right now. And here it is. Listen, please. I love you and the Lord loves you. All you have to do is recognize that the life you're living is not your fault. Nor is it the Lord's fault. Nor is it your parents' fault. But it's Satan's fault. And don't listen to him anymore. 
And I know you're addicted to these drugs. And I know you're addicted to this porn. And I know you're addicted to this violence. Okay, but don't be, don't be mad at the Lord for that. The Lord has promised that he will help you. And I know you don't believe that right now, but you've got to hang on to hope. Hope will lead to faith and faith will lead not to disappointment. The Lord is real. He, he promises you. you. You knock and he'll open. You seek and you'll find. But you've got to come out from under the spell that the devil has put you under. Jeffrey Daughtry, you're under a spell. Your logic is convoluted. You're being deceived. You're not happy. I don't know what those pink glasses mean and I am going to get into that right now. But I do know that you've had several channels that's been taken down. And, you know, and, and, and I don't know, you've only got like 5,000 people, subscribers. Because you only, the only people that's there rooting and, 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 you know, I just found out somebody on my channel has been harassing me for the last, I don't know how many, like couple years demanding that I worship the divine mother who I didn't, I didn't realize what this is all about. They're drinking her in some ceremony or something. What? This menstrual? I don't even want to talk about what they're talking about. But I've been telling her, I've been ignoring her. She's been harassing me. She even offered to pay me to read a book. He's begging me. And I had no idea, but I go onto that channel just for a minute to check in with Jeffrey Daughtry, see what's going on, see if he's talking about me or something. And she's one of his followers. He's been harassing and, 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 and trying to find some inroad into, they, these Satanists have been trying, they've been sending people over, trying to, to debate me, trying to deceive my, the, you know, people that, my subs. And now that it's kind of, come to this point where they realize I ain't budging oh they're angry they're lying they're not just out there trying to be truthers giving you another opportunity uh, uh, angle at it you know and 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 giving you information and you decide no that's not what he that's not true they don't want you to to believe in Jesus they hate Jesus and it's not just about some deity oh well, who cares Dave you know half a dozen of another one of, you know whatever it doesn't matter He's got his God, you got your God. What does it matter? I hear a lot of people saying it. It matters because he doesn't have a God. He thinks he's God. And that's why he follows after the devil who says he don't believe in the Lord. He hates the Lord. He hates Jesus' love. He went to his own place. He's made up his own rules. They indulge in evil and sex and violence. And you know what that means? That means that they want to eat that animal and they want to be like an animal. May the best man win. You're just being used by the devil. They lure you in with promises of pleasure. And they tell you that Jesus is the meanie. And that you should have free will to do what you want. But their free will is that they want, they want to lure you into accepting evil and pain and death and now you're addicted to their drugs and you're lying on the street dying homeless and you want to believe Jesus and you want to blame Jesus. Listen, I know you're confused but I'm doing this and it may sound harsh but I'm saying these words to try and hopefully you'll get through this video and, and you might be offended but at the end you might say, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what's that last part you've got there? What are you saying, Dave? That Jesus will give me happiness? He'll take away all this addiction and pain? Yes, he will. Now, I'm not saying that you can snap your fingers and no longer be addicted to heroin. But what I'm saying is, when you finally love yourself, when the Lord puts his arms around you and you realize he loves you, and you're not worthless, and you're not just some good-for-nothing whore, and you have dignity, and you care, and you begin to see that all these people, your brothers and sisters that are being destroyed by the devil as you were, they need you to stand strong. Because you, you do have love. You start finding that love within you, that compassion for others. And you say, I've got to find a way to overcome this heroin, this addiction, this pornography, this, this temper, this depression. I've got to let these demons go now. I know it may take a few days of fasting and prayer. I'm not saying it's easy. 
Sometimes, you know, they came to Jesus and said, Lord, we can't cast out these demons. They're tough, man. And Jesus said, I know, sometimes you got to have prayer and fasting. Have you tried prayer? Have you tried a little endurance. Well, no, probably because you don't feel worthy. You feel like a worthless piece of crap because that's what the devil told you. And I'm telling you, that's not what Jesus tell, tells you. Jesus says he loves you and he's never going to give up on you. And if you don't make it in this round, you know, the devil defeats you and you go down in the in the pit of hell and you, and you lay down there after a while and the pain gets so bad. There is no way. You can't ever die. There's no way to get rid of that pain except... To finally recognize what the pain is and start working your way out of that. And once you realize that there's a way out, that it's only a short little time of getting free from these demons, and then you're free and then you're happy, that in itself will give you hope and that hope will lead you to, to, the, to the victory. And I guarantee that once the Lord sees you want His love, well, I mean, he's loving you right now. I mean, you know, the old story of you were all on the beach and you were in your worst times and you found there was only one set of footprints. And you say, Lord, how come you weren't with me? He says, I was carrying you. A lot of you don't know that he's carrying you. You would have died a thousand times over. But he was there because he knows he's got a plan for you. One day he knows you're going to say, look, I'm tired of this evil and I'm going to stop believing these liars and I'm going to turn to the Lord. And the Lord's going to say, my child... I've been here all along and I do love you. Thank goodness you started to listen and you heard me and, and I don't know, I guess you were being you were being lied to and you, you you know they had you in a trance and I oh I, I sent some person to you and I I I I gave you a, a meal and, and I showed you what love was and it wasn't enough. It you were still being led along into the devil and so then I tried, you know, making you uh homeless. To maybe, maybe hope, hopefully that you'd get to a place where you were homeless, where you'd have to start seeking me. I let you, you know, feel some of the pain. Like, you know, you stuck your hand in the fire and it started to hurt. That was from the Lord because that pain made you draw your hand back out. The Lord's doing everything in his power. He's, he, the Lord is clever. He knows how to sucker such like ones, the Bible says, to lure you back to his love. Why? Because he's your mama and daddy, your heavenly father and mother. He loves you with all of his heart. And he will not let go of you. You can run from him like the prodigal son. And you can go and live with the pigs and waller around in it. But you're still the son of the king and the queen. The divine mother and father. You were in Christ from the founding of the world. You have a a purpose. And maybe after having gone through all that you went through and come out and gain that victory and you now understand what causes all this pain. It's all these lies. It's all this deception. It's all this worship of Satan. You know, it was our choice to worship Satan, Dave. Well, yeah, it was that choice that you had, that you exercised that led you down the wrong path and you finally get that and you realize, oh, the Lord is still standing there with his arms stretched out still. He's never going to forsake you. And once you get that and you go back and you find, oh, wow, I'm, I'm you know, I left the, the pig pen and I've traveled over glen and mountaintop and through the valleys and finally came back to the homestead and there's mom and dad and I see mom down there in the garden. Oh, why is mama crying down here? And there's dad. He's out there, you know, herding the sheep and he just doesn't look happy. And you come running down, you see mom, dad, you know, I know I've squandered everything and, and everything. And I, I know you don't love me no more, but you know, I'm, I just came back to see if maybe I could, you know, have a couple bucks. I'm, I don't got much and I'm dying here. And, and mom and dad are like, Oh, baby. Oh, we've been so worried about you. This is our child. Come home. You don't think that. Oh, man. They're not going to be even. They don't even. They're not mad at you. They're just so happy that you came home. And I know it's not like that. It's a parable. I know it's going to be hard to go home. You got to give up a lot. And sometimes you, you think, oh, it's not fair. It's so hard. Yeah. Well, the Lord will help you. I promise you. 
And there are a lot of people that will help you, but not in that satanic coven. Those aren't going to help you. They're going to keep bringing you down. They're going to keep luring you into the wrong area. You got to get out of there, man. Maybe you're going to have to go and get some medical help to get off these drugs. I don't know. Or maybe you're going to need some real spiritual help to get your mind to understand that the Lord is love. I mean, you're just deceived. It's not true what they're telling you. But I promise you, I promise you, I know that there is a, a reality, an eternal world where there is no crying or pain, where we are eternally happy. That's why people die in this world because it's a temporary place and we're, we're allowed to do whatever we want here. And there are people wreathing around in this awful pain and lying and deceiving and murdering one another. But as soon as you call to the Lord, as soon as you trust in the Lord, He makes your path straight. Even from the place where you started, the hell that you're in right now, He'll make it straight out of there. You'll be out of there in no time. The Lord will get you through it. I mean, it's not like you could say, Lord, I, I don't want to have any pain. Will you do that for me? And the Lord said, sure, I don't want you to have any pain. But wait a minute. I still want to take all these drugs that are chemicals that eat away my body. I still want to go out and, and, and steal from people and hurt people. Well, no, the Lord can't let you do that. He lets you do it, but you've got to partake of the consequences. So it's not like you can just say, Lord, can you help me? And all of a sudden, boom, wham, you're going to be in paradise. No, you're going to have to learn some endurance and some patience. This is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, a, is like, you know, it's, it's like the weapons of our warfare. They're not carnal, but they're spiritual and able to take down strongholds. I mean, you'll be able to, to battle your way out of there and conquer the devil. You'll get your sword, which is the sword of the Spirit, but it'll still be a battle, but it'll be a lot easier when you get your sword and you start believing in the Word, the Word of the Lord. You got to have that war, that lore, uh, word. You got to have the helmet of salvation. You don't believe in that? Well, then you're going to be open to the attacks of the enemy. You got to have the shield of faith, but you don't believe. That's why you're getting attacked. You got to have the girdle of truth. No, it's true. You do have to follow the truth. And you see, the truth will set you free. And the truth is not subjective. The truth is only one way, and it's the way of love. It's the way of kindness. It's the way of faith, of giving, and then you shall receive. It's not the way of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It's not the way of lying. It's not the way of infidelity. It's not the way of stealing and hate. It all starts with these little chakras that are closed in your body. Hate and envy and strife and depression. You've got to get rid of those things. you got to, you got to understand those things are only occurring. They're only in you because you let these demons in. But when you live properly, naturally, if you don't, you know, somehow or another get under this delusion that somehow you're not good enough just the way you are, that that this natural you, that you were born, you were born a girl, you're, you're a girl, right? There's nothing to be ashamed of that. That's your identity. That's who you are. That they're trying to get you to, to, to abandon your own reality, your own actual being and change it into what? Some dark looking gothic thing? What, what are you using your sword for? Because both sides, have, we've got a battle going on. The only thing is, is that your side's using physical swords and you're just killing each other. Our side, our sword is the spirit of, of truth. And it's killing the darkness and wiping out the, the, the hate. And it's, it's getting rid of the devil. We're not interested in getting rid of the, the people. We love the people. Yes, Jesus has got a sword. He's coming. But it's coming, the sword's in his mouth. It's the sword of the Spirit. And the darkness that's in this world will just be melted away at the 
coming of his, the brightness of his coming. And that brightness is love. When you see him, you will rejoice. You've been lied to. Satan wants you to, uh, to, to, to believe lies. He's transformed himself into an angel of light. He wants you to believe that he's the Lord. And so you've got all these people that are running around worshiping Odin now or some, you know, uh, Norwegian, Norse, Swedish deities. These Norse deities come from a tribe called Dan. They left it, they left from Sidon and they went up to Sweden and Dan's Mark. And these are these Germanic tribes. You know, this is the NAZ thing that, that want genocide and they want this dark occultic they were goths this is where we get all this gothic dark vampirish stuff they hate everyone but their own little family and they like they like to use people for anything that they can use them for because they're trying to make inroads into the into the uh, strongholds of the enemy but they're doing it with their lies they know about the spiritual warfare too they're using lies and they're defeating many of our children and our brothers and sisters. This is why we're going to have to fight back. Because see, the, the physical is not really important. I mean, yeah, people physically die. But hey, if they've got a good heart, they go to heaven. So that's not the worst part. The real battle here is spiritual. And so if you can't grasp what is right and wrong, then you can't become like God and be happy. Because that's what our dear mother Eve initiated us all into this world to partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that we might become like the divine being. But in order to become like the divine being, we have to be tempted and tested so that we can learn what is good and what is evil and make a choice. Once you make the choice to, to good and you reject evil, you don't, you're an heir of the divine being and a joint heir with Christ. You're going to sit upon throne. You won't have to deal with this darkness anymore, but you just have to choose. That's all. Yeah, there's evil. There's that possibility. It's a concept. You can think about it in your mind, and, and but you don't have to go that way. That's all. It's that simple. All we got to do is be mature in Christ. You know, we're just babes right now, so we don't know. We're being tossed to and fro by every wind of teaching and doctrines and doctrines of devils, and these teachings and these lies are killing us. And all we got to do is stand firm. And realize, no, I will not back down. I'm going to love. Somebody slaps me as hard as they want to, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna retaliate. Why? Because I know that you're my brother. And I know you don't understand what's going on. I've got to teach you by showing you how to love. So when you slap me, I'm gonna turn the other cheek and I'm gonna say, listen, brother, I'm not gonna retaliate. I love you. You don't know any better. You're just a baby. In Christ, and, and, and I'm just a bit, we're all just learning. But brother, I give you my testimony that love is the only way. And that's what you have to do. Now you go out there and, and you be a warrior in this fight and you help your brothers and say, if you're down in the trenches right now and you're on drugs or you've, you've been deceived and lied to and you're in pain, just remember, guess what? You can be a, a soldier. Yeah, I'm not a real soldier. I'm, understand what I'm saying. But one of the Lord's soldiers. Okay, once you understand how important this battle is, this spiritual battle, you're right down there in the trenches. You've you've been cozying up with all the enemy and all these poor people that the enemy has taken, your children, your brothers, your sisters. So you've got an opportunity that you, now that you're there, when you come out, you bring some people out with you. And once you do get out, you go back to the edge and you look off into hell and you say, hey guys, I was down there. It's not the truth. I give you my testimony. You are going to be used as a mighty witness to this darkness. The Lord needs you, please. If you love yourself and you still have this spark of love within you that you can look at the world in a compassionate way and understand that they're, they're deceived and you want to help and please, come over here and 
join our side. You don't have to. You can stay down there and deceive yourself into thinking that that's just fine. That you're, you know, all dressed up like some gothic, dark demon, right? Most well, my right. And, and understand that it's that, that, just sort of some delusion you're in. Just kind of wake up. And when you do wake up, say, well, yeah, I, I know that I'm, I'm lost, but I don't know how I'll get out. Don't worry. Just know that you want to leave that delusion. And seek. Jesus said, all you got to do is knock. Seek. It's all you have to do right now. You're not strong enough to go out and do any battling right now. Don't worry about that. But just cry out to the Lord. I promise you, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, if there's any inside of you, there's anything inside of you that says, I want to be happy again. I want to be with my family and I want us to all begin along. I want to live in this paradise that you're talking about, Dave. All you have to do is have faith. It's real. Because the devil's kind of convinced you that, you know, if, if there was such a place as that, then we'd be living there. Somehow this is God's fault. He led us into this. No, that's not true. You've got to understand this properly so that you can work your mind through this maze and get out of this, this delusion. But anyway, I'm well over an hour, guys. And um, if any of you would like to chat or ask any questions about this, if some of you have questions or you're not quite sure, you don't understand something, I'm always here to talk. I may not have all the answers. That's not really that important because we are humans. We don't have all the answers, but the one thing I do know is the Lord loves you. And I know He'll help you. And I know that we're at that time. It's here. This is the time of the end. This is the, the judgment, the harvest, the end of the world. And the angels are the reapers. And we've got to make a decision right now, friends. Whose side are you going to be on? And it, it's easy once you know the truth. But, you know, sometimes we get so confused. So if you've got any questions and you're confused about anything, give me a, a shout. And um, I'll do what I can to listen to what you have to say. And, you know, if I can answer any questions... But I do know that the Lord will help you. And I'll help you. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go.